Well, hello there. It's good to come to you again this week. I'm Pastor Dan Arnold at First Church of the Nazarene, and I'd just like to share with you some thoughts for this week. As I was thinking about uh, what to share with you, I couldn't help but think about um, my past and growing up in the church and hearing a lot of people talking about their walk with God. It seemed to me that uh, when I was younger, I continually fought the idea that I had failed. And many times on Sunday night, I would find myself going to the altar to ask God to forgive me for thoughts I'd had toward my brothers or evaluations of my own character or my own life. And I felt like a failure constantly. I've now pastored for a number of years, and I have found out that there's, I wasn't alone. There's an awful lot of people that struggle in their walk with God, and they believe that God is a stern taskmaster that is just waiting for us to fail so that he can get on us and condemn us. And, and we read the scriptures that tell us that God is for us, but we don't even know what that means. There's a passage of scripture in Psalms that I would like to use as a backdrop for today as we talk about this walking with God and what does it mean and how do we walk victoriously instead of feeling like we're a failure constantly and coming up short of what we should be doing. It is found in Psalms 37, beginning with verse 23. And it simply says, The steps of a man are established by the Lord, and he delights in his way. When he falls, he will not be hurled headlong, because the Lord is the one who holds his hand. I have been young, and now I am old. Yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken or his descendants begging bread. All day long he is gracious and lends, and his descendants are a blessing. Depart from evil and do good, so you will abide forever. For the Lord loves justice and does not forsake his godly ones. They are preserved forever. But the descendants of the wicked will be cut off. The righteous will inherit the land and dwell in it forever. The mouth of the righteous utters wisdom, and his tongue speaks justice. The law of his God is in his heart. His steps do not slip. Did you hear that? The law of the Lord, the law of, the, of his God is in his heart. His steps do not slip. I think God taught me about walking with him through a period of time in my own life with my daughter, Hillary. She is the youngest of our four daughters, and, and she, um, when she was little, uh, she was probably 16, 18 months, and uh, we were having trouble getting her to walk or even try to walk, uh, perhaps because she had sisters who would grab her and pick her up and carry her wherever she needed to go. And so Hillary was having some difficulty learning to walk. As soon as we would stand her up, she would drop to her knees and and crawl to us. She was a great crawler, but she wasn't a very good walker. And I know that uh, in my own heart, I began to worry a little bit that Hillary was having trouble learning to walk. The other girls walked so quickly and did so well, but Hillary was having trouble. And I was trying to work with her. I didn't want to have a daughter that would crawl to her wedding uh, and get married as she was crawling, I was sure she, she had a problem, and so I wanted to help her. And so I would get her up, and I would hold her and put my hand in the middle of her back, and then I would get one of the girls or my wife across from us to call her, and I would try to push her and help her uh, to walk. But every time she'd do it, she would just get out of the of my reach, and then she would drop to the floor and crawl uh, to her sisters or whoever it was that was calling for her. 
And I remember thinking to myself on one occasion as I was trying to help Hillary to learn to walk, I thought to myself that why am I so concerned? What am I, you know, I love her so much. Not one time when she dropped to her knees and began to crawl across the floor, not one time did I think to myself, you stupid kid, and reach out and smack her or try to uh, uh, punish her for not trying to walk. No, I would pick her up, bring her back, stand her up before me, put my hand in the middle of her back, and begin to push her a little bit, and uh, she would drop down and crawl. Not once did I think to myself, I need to spank her, or I need to uh, punish her. And as I was working with Hillary, God seemed to tap me on the shoulder, and he said, what makes you think you're better than I am? And I stopped and thought for a moment, and then the thought came again. What makes you think you're a better dad than I am? You're patient with Hillary. You're holding her up. You are sustaining her and supporting her, and you're encouraging her, and you're calling to her, and you're telling her she can do it, and you're doing everything you possibly can to help Hillary learn to walk. What makes you think you're a better dad than I am? Why do you think that I want to punish you when you fall? That when you stumble, I'm mad at you or I'm discouraged with you? And that is when God began to show me that he is for us and not against us. Now, to make the long story short, Hillary did eventually learn how to walk, but there were some things she had to learn. And when I read this 37th chapter of Psalms, I see the same things God is saying to us, the same things that Hillary had to learn. She, uh, he's saying the same things to us here. And I just want you to know today that God is for you. He is not standing beside you or in front of you waiting for you to fall so that he can chastise you or punish you or cut you off. He loves you. I want you to listen to some of these words again. And then I just want to mention uh, four things that I believe God is trying to say to us that he said to me as I was trying to teach Hillary, he pointed out to me some of these same things. In verse 23, it says, the steps of a man are established by the Lord and he delights in his way. You know, there was a period in Hillary's life that I thought she enjoyed crawling more than she did walking. And it was simply because it was easier. But once Hillary learned to walk, she didn't just walk. She ran. And the faster she could run to you, the better. And she would get great excitement and joy out of running to you. There was delight in the privilege of walking. But in verse 24, it says, when he falls, he will not be hurled headlong because the Lord is the one who holds his hand. I can't tell you how many times that I would be across from Hillary encouraging her to walk to me and somebody would be standing her up and holding her in the back like I described earlier. And I would say, come on, Hillary, you can do it. You can make it. And I would reach out my hands for her. And as she began to take the first steps or two, if she began to fall, I would move close and I would grab her before she could get hurt. And I would stand her upright again and stand her back and then back up and say, come on, you can do this. You can do it. When he falls, he will not be hurled headlong because the Lord is the one who holds his hand. God wants to support you. He wants you to walk in the light that he's given to you, but he is standing before you and he's saying to you, come on, you can make it. Don't give up. Don't quit. Don't be your own judge. Let me sustain you. And he's saying, come on, come to me, come to me. And he's encouraging you and urging you to come to him. 
It says in verse 24 or 25, I have been young and now I am old, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken or his descendants begging bread. I've been in this way a long time. I've worked with a lot of people. I've never seen anyone who has walked with God and found, out, uh, found his loving support and help that has been disappointed in the walk that they've had. And so as I read this, I realize that in verse 26, it says, all day long he is gracious and lends, and his descendants are a blessing. God loves you. God cares for you. Here's some of the things that I saw in Hillary that God taught me about walking with him. The first one is this. You don't run before you learn to walk. We were excited when Hillary would take two or three steps. We would grab her and jump up and down and shout like lunatics when she would take two or three steps. I believe that God rejoices in the obedience of his people as they take one step at a time. Walking with God is a process of obedience. It's a process of just taking one step in front of the other. Sometimes we get to judging ourselves because we're not way down the road. We just need to take one step at a time. The way we finally taught Hillary to walk was one step at a time. We just encouraged her to come and take one step at a time. What we discovered about Hillary is once she learned to walk, the more she walked, the better she got at it. The older she got, the more she enjoyed walking. And as she grew, walking became second nature. In other words, in this passage, it tells us that as we walk with God, we grow in our understanding of God, and so we walk with more confidence. We walk with more maturity. And the more mature we become spiritually, the easier it is to walk with God and trust in Him. We have found Him to be everything that He promised to be. As we walk with God, there's another thing that begins to happen that we, we realize afresh and anew. It's that God has a path for us to follow. His Holy Spirit will lead us in that path. He will show us the steps we ought to take. And the steps of a godly person are ordered by the Lord. They are established by Him. As we walk with God, he looks out on the path and he makes sure that the path that he wants us to walk is prepared. They are ordered by the Lord. With Hillary, we would take her outside, but we would check the path out before we would try to get her to walk because we didn't want her stumbling over an obstacle that she did not see. We prepared the path for her to walk on. God wants to prepare the path he wants you to walk on. He will remove any barrier that will cause you to fall. He will, he will work in that situation. He'll prepare that path. They are ordered by the Lord. We have to come to a point where we believe that God loves us so much that he's preparing the path for us and the steps that he wants us to take are designed by him, organized by him, prepared by him, and he will lead us one step at a time. But the last thing I want you to know is that when you're walking with God and you're trusting in him and he's preparing the path and you're listening to his encouragement, he's not there to beat you up. He's not there to judge you. He's not there to, to punish you. He's there to lift you up and keep you from falling. But here's the good word from the Lord. The steps of a good man are established by the Lord, and he delights in his way. Hillary learned to love to walk. She wanted to walk with us anywhere we went. 
when I would walk down to the other building at the church, she wanted to walk with me. And many times she would run ahead of me and turn. And with a big smile on her face, she would say, Daddy, I'm walking. Daddy, I'm running. And she would want me to celebrate with her. But she found out that running and walking (laughs) was a lot better than crawling. It was easier on her knees. It was easy. She could get places a lot quicker because she was walking. And she delights, delighted in walking. Now, I don't know. I, I just believe that she has found that walking is a lot better way to travel than crawling. And I'm saying to you today that God is your support, that God is for you. You don't have to worry about uh, f- falling when he is with you and he's holding you up. He's encouraging you to come to him so that he can lead you and and in the paths of righteousness, so he can bless your life. God is not a, a mean father that doesn't want to celebrate or help or love or uh, to, to lift his children. Satan is the promoter of the idea that God is standing just waiting for us to fail so he can crack the whip and cast us away from his presence. I'm sorry, but my heavenly father's a lot better dad than I am, and I have never wanted to do that with my children. I love them too much. I urge them to come on and make it. I have encouraged them in tough times. I have lifted them when they have fallen. And I have loved them through the process. And our Heavenly Father is a much better father than any earthly father could possibly be. The law of his God is in his heart. And his steps, or her steps, do not slip. I'm telling you today, God is for you. He'll get you through. Trust in him. Rely on him. Depend on him. And he'll get you all the way through. And Hillary would testify to you today that walking's a whole lot better than crawling. And you can walk with God, and he will walk with you. Lord Jesus, today we come to you asking you to release us from the judgments of our own hearts, where we have decided that if we fall at all, we have failed God, and that He that the Father is just standing there ready to whip us or punish us. I pray today that there might be somebody who is watching this video who has felt defeated in the past and beat up and like a spiritual failure that would just let go and trust in the Heavenly Father to teach them how to walk with Him. Lord, we know that you have prepared our steps, that you will lift us up and we will not completely fall down. You will lift us up and put us back on our feet. And then you'll say, come on, child, walk with me. Lord, I pray that there would be somebody today that hears this video and, and listens to this devotion that would take their Bibles and turn to Psalms 37 and read these verses for themselves and that they might be released from the judgment of an angry father and brought into the presence of a heavenly father that loves them so much that he will bankrupt heaven to keep that which they've committed onto you against that day. Thank you, Lord. Be with each one that's watching this video And may we have a week of walking with you in victory and joy in these times. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a great week. Walk with God. He'll walk with you and he'll keep you in the center 
of his will. God bless you. Have a good week.